I, I just wanted to say before we get too far, yes. real quick, with two minutes. Thanks very much uh, to the Journal of Pan African Studies, uh, to Itabadi, to Jais, and, and especially just, it's just an honor. And an honor to be honor. here with Molefe. I can't tell you, I didn't spend a lot of time in it, but Molefe means a lot to me, and I just, I just admire his mind, I admire his steadfastness, and, and I admire the fact that he opens up new horizons of how we think and understand ourselves as African people. A lot of times people be saying, oh, Afrocentrism, somebody said that 100 years, please. Molefe provided the conceptual basis for it, the literature for it, the, the PhD program to make sure it was carried on as a legacy beyond him. So we give him a lot of thanks. You know, I, I accept that with that in mind with my brother and friend and colleague, Dr. Molefi Asante. <laughs> So we got three to five minutes on Q and A, and <laughs> for for anyone on the panel, yeah. so, Dr. Blake, Dr. Blake, and Dr. Robert Tolley, and we have our MSU co <laughs> You know, first of all, uh, <laughs> Dr. Blake. And I have it that, uh, and I'm speaking now from the perspective coming from Africa. So I've lived, in, in fact, I've lived most of my life here, but uh, I go back and forth. I'm from Sierra Leone originally, mm -hmm. but I go back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth. And the concern I have is this, based on the presentation today, that we are gradually observing. We're gradually, gradually what? Observing. African culture becoming a museum piece. A museum piece. Yes. It's becoming a museum piece. And that's going to create a lot of problems for African people everywhere. Because the culture is being decimated. And uh, we can romanticize the way we have been romanticizing. But when you come to the reality of what is going on in that continent as we speak here. And that was my question yesterday. Has black studies failed Africa? <laughs> and the, the issue is not failing by trying and not succeeding. The issue is not really even getting into it the way we should get into it. So that's my concern. That we are approaching the continent, the culture, Right. It's becoming a museum piece. Right. Appreciate uh, you know, yeah. okay. we, we got it, we got it, we got it. Appreciate yeah. what you said, if I'm saying correctly. See, yeah. listen to the definition of culture. Our culture, Kawida, an ongoing census of the best of African thought and practice in constant exchange with the world. When you say you come from Africa, I'm coming from Africa. Africa is a world, uh, you want to finish? Africa is a world community, right? I mean, I, it's a continent, but it's also a world community. Otherwise, garbage not real. You know what I'm saying? So I just think it's very, and we don't have no Pan-Africanism. You can't have just Pan-Africanism of the continent. We've got to have Pan-Africanism of the world. I'm not, I'm not a junior brother. I would never put myself in a position to be a junior brother. So I think it's very important for us to understand. When I talk about culture, I'm talking about ancient and modern. Second, I'm talking about continental and diaspora. So when I say African, I'm talking about Malcolm, and I'm talking about Fannie Lou Hamer, and I'm talking about Sojourner Truth and Harry Tubman as well as Yaa Sani Wa. You understand? And, and as well as Nkrumah. So I think it's very important. Now, yes. you have to take from 
I'm almost in. You have to. You you have to take you you have to take from Africa the best of what it means to be African. Africa is my moral and social idea. I don't know anybody else that takes it that serious. They usually borrow from some other culture. They borrow from you or from Arabia, or for Israel, or for some Greek Rome. I don't know, but Af Af Africa is my moral and intellectual idea. And I use classical African society. Don't ever say I'm idealizing Egypt. I know what Egypt is, but it's not that kind of demonized thing. Biblical text indicates it. There's no evidence of that. That's just a narrative constructed, and it's not what Greece said it was. Right? I study it. I know what the people say. I read the text. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, okay. Go, go. Can I go? <laughs> it, 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 it's, very, it's very hard to follow that, but but I, I just want to. I just want to. I, I think I want to tease a little bit out of what uh, uh, Dr. Blake is is raising because he said. I, I think that what he he meant. I, I hope is that just coming from the continent and seeing the conditions right. of the continent, right. is that what you were talking right. about? Right. Seeing the conditions of the continent, right. he, he raises the question uh, why, why the conditions are as they are. Yeah. And I think that what we are seeing are aberrations. And I think that these are aberrations, what I would call, of African culture, because of course, if you've been to the continent recently, you know that evangelism is all over all the place, over. Islam in an extremist yeah. form is all over the place. Well, that's why I say evangelism. There's a whole. It's so, so it's a very. So, so what you are raising is a legitimate question. But I think that what uh, uh, Professor uh, Karenga has dealt with uh, uh, is that, that the question of the best, you see, uh, best of the uh, synthesis, is the synthesis of the best. And, and, if, and not not of the aberrations, yeah. right. you know, of the best. But but you you raise a good question. I think what we need to do is to have a revitalization exactly. of culture yeah. on the African really continent. Right. Let me tell you. I uh, accept that, Doctor. Doctor Ryan, we're on the same page. Thank, yes, we are, we're on the same page. I appreciate. It. Thank you. For that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Black women studies, you come to our department and learn about 
about black women's studies. We have people who are in the white women's and gender studies coming to us. I mean, we don't think it's our responsibility to educate white people, but at the same time, I think for us to move forward, everybody has to be educated. But the point is, people know now that if they want to learn about black women, they come to us. If they want to learn about criminality and race, they come to us. If they want to learn about African or womanism, they come to us. Right. So there's a four points of clarification well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just speak? This? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Rodney Tyler. Uh, let, me just, let me just say this. Uh, two years ago, or three, I was at a conference in Malaysia of uh, scholars who were non-European. They were basically Asians and Africans. And we tried to wrestle with this issue about social sciences. And it comes right back to this issue where you say, we, 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 we will have these programs where we, we will have concentration in anthropology and black studies because our, our students will be infiltrating and dominating anthropology. That is not going to happen. No. What, what we have said at Temple is that when our people finish in our program, and, our, and, and, and I, I don't know, I mean, almost all of our people, almost 100% get jobs. So, and they're, all, they're only in African American studies. Uh, because there are departments, even in history and in literature, who say, look, if you take a PhD at Temple in African American studies, you have more graduate courses in literature about African people than you would if you went to an English department. I take, for example, Temple. We only teach two courses in the English department about uh, black writing. Only two. And sometimes not, not but one. So if you're a graduate student in the English department, most of your training, uh, uh, you come out and you're black and you want to be, or are you white and you want to be a, a, a teacher in African American literature, you don't get the training you would get if you were in African American studies. The same is true in history. We t they have one history course in the history department. But if you come to African American studies, your, your richness, the texture of what you learn about Africa and African Americans is far deeper. So you can challenge anybody in a history department. Mm -hmm. So, so I, what I say, and I understand the politics of having these joint appointments, not joint appointments, but joint uh, programs. But when I look at them, I ask myself, because I was one of those students in the 60s, I ask myself, is this what we were fighting for? Is this what we were trying to do, trying to get in a situation where we would have faculty members who were half in English and half in black studies? No. We were not fighting for that. We were fighting for a, 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 an autonomous department where we would be able to hire and fire and get space and, and create uh, on the basis of our own culture. That's what we were fighting for. No, no, I'm talking about the concentration. No, but your concentration. No, 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 and, and, and look, and I'm just saying, no, no, and I'm just saying I recognize the, the, the political situation. Each campus is different, but I'm just saying that we need to do, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Can we take, can we take one quick question in the No, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank, thank y'all for the, the honor. Uh, thank the association. Thank my uh, my colleagues here at this table. Um, I, I will count this as one of the great honors of my profession. Thank you very much. I reaffirm what uh, Olefe has said and. Uh, all the other per persons on the panel. And I thank um, uh, Professor Kindness, Professor Stewart, uh, Professor uh, Asante, Professor uh, Tillerton, uh, for the opportunity to, to interact with y'all and to you know, share some views. I, I, I love this kind of conversation. I want us to do more. I thank um, uh, Amico uh, Shabazz for uh, conceiving of this project, and we should give him a hand. I don't know if he's still <laughs> and, and I want to thank again Ijebadi and Jaiz. I want to thank the Journal of uh, Pan-African uh, Studies uh, for this honor. I'm honored by, and I'm honored, uh, as Molefe has, for this opportunity to share with so many black uh, scholars. We do this all the time, but this was different. It's like, you know, talking right here, and exchanging and 
hearing our life's work discussed. It's a good thing. And also, stay in touch, right? And, and do me a favor, please. Yeah, that's good. Don't, don't let people tell you you're finished before you are. Yeah. And don't assume, like a rap record, you're doing more than you are. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be braggadocious. Yeah, be humble good. about yeah, your scholarship. Yeah, right. And that's why I said about the elder thing. Yeah. I'm a scholar. I'm a senior scholar. I want you to talk to me as a scholar. We'll get to the L. If you get out of line, you can believe, I'll tell you. But that's not the issue here. The issue is ideas. Let us constantly think of do new ways to bring good into the world and to be good to each other. That's so important, black people. Because what is this knowledge for if it's not to create a good world we all uh, want and deserve to live in? I close as I started. This is our duty. To know our past and honor it to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future, and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive way. Thanks again. Uh,